Hello everyone, my name is Ziamaro and welcome to the channel. So today I'm going to be giving you a quick rundown on how to play Awakening Nova in Black Desert Online. This video is going to be focused primarily on PvE. I'll probably do a PvP one at some point as well, so if you're interested let me know and maybe think about subscribing so you don't miss it. So first off, I think it's important we ask, why play Awakening Nova? The short answer is, because you want to be Sonic the Hedgehog. It's pretty common knowledge now that Awakening Nova is an insanely quick class when it comes to movement speed. Another reason you might want to play Nova is because of the combat style. I know it's not universally popular, but I personally love the fencing style she has. I think the keybinds fit the class really well too. She has a lot of S keybinds and then sudden bursts of speed, which to me feels kind of right for a caster hybrid fencer. And finally, the probably main reason people are picking her up right now is because they're realizing just how busted she is. Which is funny because when I started playing her, she was mostly considered mediocre at best, even though almost nothing has changed since I started playing her. Personally, I wouldn't play her just because she's strong. In PvE, Sucklan can get similar or better results with a quarter of the effort, and in PvP, well, I guess we fill a niche that is kinda unmatched by any other class. Her damage is kinda overtuned if you have high AP and accuracy, but I would expect that to be brought into line eventually. Her vacuums are also top notch utility if you learn to use them well. There are other more sought after classes and better duelists too, but honestly you can play Nova for whatever reason you like. So let's get into how we play her, starting with skill points. Awakening Nova is incredibly skill point light. 1,300 skill points and you have almost everything you'll ever need. 1,000 points will get you a pretty much workable build for PvE, and the only thing missing would be a few PvP skills. So you really don't need to spend much time in polys. You basically just take the passives from pre-awakening and then grab everything from awakening. That's basically it. You can actually leave the core for now if you don't have the skill points, but generally you want to take Starfall core for PvE and Swooping Ring for PvP. Once you have a few more skill points, you'll want to take Quaratum's Earth, which is one of our Rabam skills. This does really decent damage in PvE and it's a very good finisher slash down smash in PvP. You'll also want to take Punishing Trap from Pre-Awakening for Jewels, which is our grab, as well as Quaratum's Opening, which can give you some extra mobility if you miss the grab. Take Quaratum's Protection, which is our Pre-Awakening Q block, and you should also take Quaratum's Guard. Yes, there are a lot of Quaratum skills, which is the pre-awakening quote-unquote e-buff. You actually hotbar it, but it gives us a really nice heal, a DP buff, and grab resistance. It can actually come in pretty clutch when you're fighting Elvia bosses if you're a gearlet like me. For PvE and the occasional duel, that's basically all you need. There are a few other skills you might want to take for group PvP, but for the purposes of this guide, that's pretty much it. So there are a number of skills in our kit that can be used faster if you use another ability before them. Stars Cool and Comet both get a faster animation if you do this. Riposte also skips the first two strikes and just does the third hit, which is the most powerful hit and the float portion of the skill. Starfall, which is our big nuke ability, can actually get a faster a cast if you use Remise, Lunge or Frozen Ring before it. It actually cuts the animation time by 40%, so it's definitely worth doing it when you can. I would say that getting back attacks is slightly more important, but if you have Lunge ready anyway and you're going for the back attack, then just do the animation cancel. Brutal Ring, which I recommend hot barring and using as one of your main pools, also gets a slightly shorter animation if you cast certain skills after it. I haven't fully tested everything, but I know that Lunge and Shift Dash both give it a shorter animation. A lot of our skills can be cancelled mid-animation, such as Remise. If you stop holding LMB, it'll stop the animation. Flesh can be cancelled by basically any other skill. I know a lot of people just do the first hit to get the cast buff, then cancel it. Personally, I do the whole animation because I like to use that time to check my other cooldowns. Now, in terms of combos, for PvE, I'm just going to give you one, because I don't think you really need too many. And that combo is Riposte, into Lunge, into Comet. That's down Q, F, forward F, if you're on PC. Now, practice that and let it sink into your muscle memory. Riposte is our AP buff, Lunge is our minus evasion debuff, and we load Comet with back attack and crit damage add-ons. All three do excellent damage for how quick they are, and Riposte and Comet have a similar cooldown, so I basically treat this combo as one skill. It's also the most comfortable order to put them in, because you basically do down Q, press F and hold, then tap W to use Comet. 
My APM actually went down after doing it this way because it's a lot more economical with key presses. Okay, so onto the actual PVE rotation. Now, a word of warning here, Awakening Nova doesn't really have a set skill rotation like Sucklan or Awakening Guardian that you can just infinitely rotate. We actually favor a skill priority system. I actually created a spreadsheet to calculate the DPS of our abilities by recording all the animations when cancelled, so they're as quick as possible. Then I counted up the frames that they took to cast in DaVinci Resolve to get an idea of how long the animation is on each ability. I then just divided the damage modifiers by the cast time and that gave me a rough idea of how much DPS each skill does. As with all classes in BDO, high FPS makes animations faster. So you will do more damage with better FPS. It's dumb, but it's just a fact. And that did show up in my tests if I capped the FPS lower. The numbers I used were locked at 144 FPS just to have some consistency. But even with that, like latency fluctuations and stuff changed it. So do take these numbers with a pinch of salt. Anyway, this chart helps us prioritize skills. Take into consideration that some of these skills offer buffs or debuffs. So that kind of upgrades their priority a bit. For example, Flesh does quite low damage, but it does give us the casting buff. And Star's Call doesn't do great damage, but absorbing hits in the frontal guard charges up our Excel. So it's actually a good skill. In any case, Starfall, Comet, Lunge, Repost, Remise, and Slicing Ring are our big hitters. And you should use them basically on down. And during Excel, Excel Remise and Excel Swooping Ring take a high priority too. But let's be real, most of us fall into a pattern even if it's not totally optimal. Or at least that's what I do. So my general opener on packs goes something like this. Lunge, Remise, Flesh, and then Repost, Lunge, Comet, which is the little combo I told you about. Starfall, Star's Call, Slicing Ring, Lunge. First of all, take note of how I fit in Lunge multiple times. It's a medium damage skill with a very short animation and cooldown, so you should use it as often as possible. Something you'll notice on Nova is that you will sometimes run out of skills to use, and there are a few solutions to that. Some people like to avoid cancelling repost, so they'll S-block for a split second and then use it so they get the full animation. Some people like to use the Brutal Ring flow at the end of Frozen Ring or Slicing Ring. Almost everyone should be throwing in Quaratum's Earth because it's a decent damage skill and a great filler. To swap back from Pre-Awakening, you just need to lock Icy Fog and then you can Shift Dash to instantly go back into Awakening. Personally, I dash to go for back attacks quite a lot and that helps the cooldown situation a bit. I also dash a lot because my damage reduction is pretty low, so I'm also avoiding hits when I do this. The damage on Twisted Orbit, which is the LMB flow after a dash, is not bad. So if you're already dashing for a back attack or whatever, feel free to throw in an LMB and do Twisted Orbit right after it. I wouldn't throw it in just for the sake of it, but if you're gonna be dashing anyway, then use it. In the clip I'm showing you, I actually tried out a repeatable combo. It's as close as you can get to doing this on Awakening Nova while trying to throw in the heavy hitters as often as possible. I'll divide it into two sections because it kind of repeats to some extent. So first you do Lunge, Remise, Flesh, Repost, Lunge, Comet, Starfall, Star's Call, Slicing Ring. So that's basically the same as my standard opener on packs anyway. Then you go back to the start, but throw in Frozen Ring after Comet because the other abilities are still on cooldown. So you go Lunge, Remise, Flesh, Repost, Lunge, Comet, Frozen Ring. Now, usually I'm dashing in between skills sometimes and throwing in Twisted Orbit, but depending on how much you're dashing for back attacks, you may need to throw in Quaratum's Earth or something like that as well. That rotation is actually fully repeatable. You can kind of use this rotation and transfer from one pack to the next. So once you've pretty much killed one pack, you continue your skill rotation on the next pack. And during Excel, you can kind of keep this rotation up too. The only adjustment you have to make is to cancel Excel Flesh with a dash instead of leaving it for the full duration and then throw in Excel Swooping Ring right after it. I would still recommend learning the skill priorities so you can freestyle it a bit. You'll definitely pull a bit more trash if you know the skills really well and you can prioritize your rotation. But I thought I'd give you guys a semi-brain-dead combo to get you started. Because I know the whole, my skills are still on cooldown thing is something that comes up a lot on the Nova Discord. Moving on, I've actually already mentioned it a few times, but let's take a look at Axel. Excel is called on guard in your skill sheet. So if like me, when you play Nova for the first time, you're like, what is this Excel that keeps getting mentioned and how do I use it? Well, it's referred to as on guard. To activate Excel, your star's breath needs to be at 100%, and then you either use E to begin Excel or forward Q to use Excel Swooping Ring and immediately start Excel. In PvE, I only ever use the second option because it's just quicker. 
Excel lasts 30 seconds, but for the first 10 seconds of Excel, you have permanent super armor as well, meaning you can't get CC'd. On Guard has a cooldown of 60 seconds, so you can theoretically get 50% uptime on it. And in PvE, it's quite realistic to actually use Excel on cooldown. So during Excel, Remise, Flesh, Stars Cool, and your Shift Dash and Flow all get an Excel version. In the case of Remise, Stars Cool, and the LMB Flow after our Dash, they all do more damage than their regular version, boosting your damage output significantly. In the case of our Shift Dash, it actually becomes an iframe, but it's completely unprotected while it's on cooldown, which kind of feels bad to be honest. Excel Flesh is kind of a weird one because it actually does less DPS during Excel due to the absurdly long animation. It actually becomes one of our worst abilities, which is kind of laughable. So you should really get in the habit of canceling it if you can. Personally, I often just let it run its full course because I'm lazy, but it's certainly not optimal. The other skill I kind of mentioned already is Excel Swooping Ring. This is actually added as an extra skill during your Excel. You can still use the regular Swooping Ring with forward RMB, which is a great pull skill, but low damage and not worth using for DPS. Excel Swooping Ring, on the other hand, does excellent damage and you should use it on cooldown while Excel is up. So, how do you build Excel? In PvE, you'll primarily be building it through the use of your Awakening skills. Almost everything that deals damage builds Star's Breath, which is the resource used for Excel. Two exceptions are Brutal Ring and Star's Ring. The latter, however, can be used to build more Star's Breath through another mechanic. Star's Ring, or RMB on PC, is our vacuum skill. You can hold it twice to put two vacuums out, and by using Fuse Gravity, or down RMB, you can suck those vacuums back and build 5% Star's Breath for each vacuum absorbed. This used to be 10% per vacuum, but it got nerfed fairly recently. Anyway, in PvE this isn't actually a big deal, because at high-end spots you'll be getting on guard on cooldown just through using your abilities, so you don't need to worry about absorbing vacuums. Another way to build Star's Breath is through our Shift E buff. Be aware that using this to build Star's Breath costs 500 HP, but it does give you 50% Star's Breath, which is pretty huge. If you use Shift E during Axel, however, it actually heals you for 500 HP and still gives you the AP and crit damage buff. It's my personal preference to use it during Excel because I can get it on cooldown anyway. The only exception to this is when I have an Elvia weapon. It's hard to get Excel on cooldown with a weapon, so I'll sometimes use Shift E to get Excel more often. Regardless, you should use Shift E on cooldown because it will increase your grind speed quite a lot. And the same goes for the Z buff as well. Use them both as often as possible. Two skills that really increase your Star's Breath generation are Slicing Ring and Star's Call. Both of them are frontal guards, and when you block damage with them, it actually builds more Star's Breath. These two abilities are actually big contributors to being able to get Excel on cooldown. You don't need to think about it too much because you'll be using them in your damage rotation anyway, but it's just something to be aware of. Technically, I suppose you could use the longer Star's Call animation by not casting anything before it to allow more times to block hits, but nah, don't, don't do that. Finally, let's take a quick look at add-ons. I'll tell you the add-ons which I think everyone should be using, then I'll tell you the ones that I use that are personal preference. So I think the no-brainers are minus DP and plus car speed on Remise. Remise is already our DP down skill, and it's basically the first skill in our rotation apart from Lunge, so it makes sense to build up the attack speed as well. Next is Monster AP and Critical Hit on Repost. Following the same kind of logic, Repost is already our AP buff, so let's just chuck some more AP on it. One that I thought I was using, but I actually haven't because I'm an idiot, is back attack and crit damage on Comet. Comet is going to put you behind the enemy, so it makes a lot of sense to add back attack damage to that. Next, Starfall. I would chuck monster AP and crit damage on this. I know we've doubled up on this one, but Starfall is our T3 add-on skill, and monster AP and crit damage are two of the best for us on Nova. The last two are kind of personal preference. It really just depends on which other abilities you're going to use a lot, and when you're going to use them. A lot of people chuck minus DP or some other buff like crit chance or monster AP on Brutal Ring because it's our pool skill. That's a pretty solid choice. Frozen Ring and Swooping Ring are also good skills to put add-ons on, but I'll give you my two picks. So first, I put plus accuracy and minus evasion on Lunge. It's actually not the best choice for PvE, but it's a must pick for PvP. The accuracy is definitely nice for PvE if you're lacking it, but the main reason I do it is for the inevitable jewels. The other one I go for is plus DP and minus DP on Swooping Ring. The reason I have this is because, first of all, Swooping Ring add-ons actually apply to both the regular Swooping Ring and Excel Swooping Ring, so you're kind of getting two for one there. 
But the reason I have plus DP is because I do orcs at very low DP and it just makes it that little bit more comfortable. 15 DP or more specifically damage reduction is actually pretty huge. So if you're a gear like me, I can't recommend it enough. The minus DP could honestly be swapped to monster damage or crit or anything else really, but I just go with minus DP for when I have an Elvia weapon. It's just nice to be able to apply it with a few different skills. So that just about does it for this guide. It's really difficult to cover everything while keeping the video succinct. So if I've missed anything or you have any questions, feel free to ask down below and either I or some knowledgeable person might be able to help you. Also head over to the Nova Discord because there's a lot of extra info on there. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please feel free to subscribe for more gaming guides, news and discussion. And you can also check out the link to my personal Discord down below. It's a bit dead these days, but maybe we can get it up and running again. But until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.